In the following video, you are going to see why you should stop building AI chatbots and the three-step framework that you can follow for long-term success in the AI space. There's been a lot of buzz around this kind of AI chatbots. Everywhere you turn on YouTube, you can find people who just say they are uh, charging $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 for chatbots. chat, but you can build them in 50 minutes, five minutes, one hour, sell them for a thousand euros. So, um, today, what I want to answer is, uh, are those actual chatbots good and uh, what you can actually do to build a sustainable business in the generative AI and avoid falling into the trap or shiny object syndrome. So, a lot of the people start building a, a chatbot in the following way. First off, they find a YouTube video called How I Made $5,000 Selling an AI Chatbot. They watch the video where a person shared this success case story where they paid this bot and sell, uh, sell it for thousands of euros in just a couple minutes. Then people just start building the bot, uh, thinking about all the money that they will make. Uh, after it's finished, they start prospecting, talking to clients, and then there's a, there's a lot of rejection facing. And uh, they wonder what they did wrong, because uh, they don't have a clue about that. And uh, here I want to explain what is actually wrong with the AI chatbots and how you can actually fix uh, those issues and uh, propose uh, a, a better solution for your clients and also uh, also sell a better solution for your clients. A lot of people um, think that um, the chatbot is, ju is just uh, some, uh, some shiny object that uh, the client wants, when in reality the client just wants uh, a problem solved. And the people try to sell the chatbot without having a clear understanding of what the problem is the chatbot solving. So. If you have uh, something that uh, doesn't actually solve the problem, it's worthless to the client. So here I have a, a specific example of something like an appointment setting chatbot for a gym. So um, let's say you are trying to sell an AI chatbot that can automatically set appointments for gyms uh, for their own website. But um, the main problem could be that 90% of gym owners uh, don't have a website. Don't uh, Or if they have a website, only 20% people per month visit their website. So what is the point of adding a chatbot to a platform that has no traffic, for example? There's no point, there's no ROI. You can charge $1,000 for that chatbot, but uh, which kind of business owner would, uh, uh, would take you on that offer, considering that maybe 20 people per month uh, visit uh, uh, his website? I, I don't think a smart one probably. So there's no tangible benefit for them. And uh, the second main problem here is that in all of these videos, the chatbot is seen as a solution. It's not seen as what it actually is because the chatbot itself is a tool. It's a tool that actually is used to, so to solve a pro uh, problem, like AI in the same sense of AI. So the main focus for a business owner here in the AI space should be on these three key points. Finding a painful problem, asking is the AI the best way to solve that problem? And three, asking is a chatbot the best vehicle to solve the problem? So as you can see here, we have three different layers. We have a, pr a general problem layer, we have an AI layer, and then we have a delivery layer or vehicle layer that we can um, address. So let's uh, see all the different layers that we have over here. The first one is related to problem understanding. So in general, in business, what you're trying to do is sell, uh, is, uh, sell a, a solution to a client problem. So your main goal, especially in an industry so wide and uh, uh, that could be applied throughout every single business, is to actually understand what is the main problem that the client could be could be having. So it's important for you to first off have a clear understanding of the different components of the business and different uh, structures of the business. So with that I mean, for example, uh, a business is composed of uh, lead generation, is composed of sales, is composed of delivery, and is composed of operations in general. So how are these different uh, um, sectors? Uh, parts of the business operates, how, how do they operate? So it's very important for you to address that. And then um, it's very important to have an idea of the objectives related 
to um, the business. So the, which are the goals of the business? Do they want to reach a certain profitability? Do they want to reach a, a certain target of clients? And uh, those goals shape uh, where you need to find the problem. And then uh, finally, the, the third thing that you need is uh, you need a set of questions. You need to um, you need to understand which are the main areas that you can address and uh, dig deeper down in uh, that specific area to see where could be the problem. So for example, uh, you talk with an agency owners and you say, okay, what is your goal with the agency? Your, your goal maybe is to add uh, 10k per month in monthly recurring revenue. Okay, so um, where are you currently struggling right now? Are you struggling to retain clients? Are you struggling to get clients? And in that way, by asking further detailed question, you, you delineate the problem. So the problem could be lead generation on one side or delivery on the other side. So that is uh, the, um, the key thing over here. And the second point is related to uh, AI. So addressing if the problem can be solved with AI. So once you have uh, this in-depth understanding of, of that, it's important if uh, uh, this could be uh, the right solution that AI solved. So it's important for you to un have an understanding of where AI should be used and then compare uh, artificial intelligence to also the, their indirect alternatives. So with that, I, I don't mean uh, just uh, using uh, another chatbot or using uh, or always using AI. I mean comparing AI to giving someone uh, the work uh, to do manually. So uh, uh, VA, for example, doing the work manually yourself because maybe it doesn't take that much time. Hiring, uh, hiring someone to do part of the work and not just every single part of the work. Or for example, buying a software that uh, does the work. So as you can see here, your uh, AI is not competing, um, is not competing with AI itself. Those are called indirect competitors. Like uh, for example, Netflix competes uh, with uh, sleep, AI can complete with the VA. So your goal in this phase is to compare AI with the different alternatives and see whether AI comes up on top. So do a little bit of a comparison of the different, uh, um, of the different solutions here. Next, we have the uh, deeper layer that is related to the delivery vehicle. So now that uh, you uh, thought about the problem you f uh, and uh, you consider that AI is the best solution to solve the problem, there are different ways to uh, use AI to solve the problem. So you can present a different solution to the client. You can either present a automation created using Zapier or Make, which is a low-code uh, solution, but also something that is really uh, easy uh, to, to implement. So here, for example, I have uh, an example for you of a automation uh, for marketing delivery automation solution, which I talked about in my previous vi uh, video. Then uh, we could have another solution, which is a local tool paired with coding and a proper AI tool. So for example, this is a, a bot press uh, um, BotPress bot uh, plus a stack AI interface of a uh, Andrew Huberman AI persona. Then we have a custom solution. So here's an example of an MVP of a business analyzer solution done with Python that, using, that is using Langchain. And then finally, you can have another idea here, which is uh, an already existing tools because uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. There are a lot of different tools that are, um, there are a lot of different tools uh, in the market uh, every single day. So your actual goal is uh, to research them, find the ones that work best for specific use cases, and then maybe also propose those to the client. And, and maybe as a, a bonus, you can take a percentage on top of that. You can take a referral fee from the tool. As you can see here, there are a ton of different ways to deliver uh, an AI service to your clients, it's not just the chatbot throughout uh, which everyone seems to, uh, seems to propose. So I think uh, here I want to do a final point, uh, a final important point, which is are all AI chatbot useless? ChatGPT, for example, is a chatbot and uh, it's super useful, but uh, it's important to, for you 
when you are selling this product to frame it in uh, the best uh, possible way. So a, a, a couple of examples could be framing the chatbot as, as, as uh, an AI assistant or AI copilot instead of just saying a chatbot because the chatbot has a very negative connotation and uh, in this way you just uh, proposing something that could help in some part of the business and streamline some aspect of the business and not just uh, using as a game that could be a, a nice to have for most of business owners. So as an example, what I have over here is a Google Ads Copilot, which is a tool that could be useful when checking Google Ads and then understanding how to improve and how, how to make the ads better. And this is actually a, a chatbot, but frame it as a copilot makes it more relatable to what it actually uh, is used for. It's used as a helping hand, like AI should be at this precise stage in the business. And this is a solution that enables people to talk with the data, enables to people to propose solution and can be used by people that are either expert and know what to do with the data or non-expert and don't know what to do with the data. So this is the actual usage of an actual AI chatbot. Hope this video was useful for you. Have a nice day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.